All right, folks, hey, we're cruising in the 2020 Corvette Stingray Z51. Now we're going to show you how to start this bad boy. It's pretty simple. Put your foot on the brake. Okay, now once you've got it started, of course, you want to look at all the gauges and make sure everything's good to go and, you know, temperatures are up and, you know, everything's working just fine. It'll get down and you can actually move things. This is a G force right here that you can take a look at and it'll tell you if you're going around turns too fast. And then of course you can configure it and do what have you. Now let's look at something else while the uh, navigation system is coming up. This is actually doing this download, it's doing some initialization. And then once it does it, it'll kick into a full nav system that you can use to travel or just have on as, as it is. It takes a couple of seconds for it to come on. Now we're on there. Now. You've got three modes. You got tour, sport, and track. You have a knob underneath this little center console guy right here. And if you turn it to the right, it changes the dash to sport. And if any of you audio file folks out there heard the difference in the exhaust, it drops down. Changes the mapping of the exhaust system. There's no electric switches or anything. It's truly just opening up the, the pipes itself. You have a G-force meter up to the top left. You got your economy trend down here. Believe it or not, you can get 30 miles per gallon. Then to the right, you got performance. And then you got a G meter in the side. This is on sport. And over here, it tells you what you're in. So in case you forget, because there's really not a lot to tell you. But now let's just say you're gonna, you're, you belong to a club and you want to go to the track. Well, guess what? There's your track mode. And you can change anything and everything you want. You can configure it for lap timer. You've got a performance timer to accelerate to start so you can and by the way there is a data recorder on this vehicle. You put an SD card in it and it will capture every bit of it. All right so they even put a little map down here at the bottom. It looks like one of the racetracks and I'm sure if you're at a track it'll it'll definitely do it. Your tachometer is up here in great big bold letters that way there's no if ands or buts about it it's got your all your temps going on inside that as well so if you go back to the regular touring she'll quiet right down and it'll get nice and quiet now if you want if you'll notice we have paddle shifts right here and if you want to use paddle shifters there's a little m button that you push and that M button right there allows you to shift manually. Now, on the steering wheel, which is very functional, there's this little guy, and it's a Z. And if you push it, it turns red, it throws Z up there, and now it's getting, getting with it. It's showing you tire pressure, it's showing you everything you want to know, because once you set this vehicle as to what it is that you want, then the Z captures that and you can head out to the track and really see what it's doing, especially when you go back to here. So when it comes to functionality, and let's talk a little bit about the climate control. I know it's not performance, but look at this real unique HVAC system. It starts with uh, driver's side temp, seat coolers, or seat heaters, seat coolers. You can sync it. Put it on auto. You can change your uh, the airflow to your face, to the to the defrost to your face to your feet. You can manually control it. You can turn the AC on and off. You've also got interior. You've got front uh, defroster, rear defroster, and again for the passenger, they have their seat coolers here as well. And then of course the temperature for the passenger. Very very unique. It's, now the only downside to it is if your passenger wants to put their arm up here on here like an armrest, they may have a tendency to turn things on and off. If you'll notice the steering wheel is not round, nor is it just flat on the bottom. And they do this so you capture the whole speedometer and instrument cluster within the steering wheel. So you're not looking over the top, nor are you looking underneath as well. And then again, of course, you know, you've got all your ventings right here. Real simple to get to, just real easy toggle. 
nothing super fancy. You got your heads up display, you can move it up, move it down. Uh, so you're pretty manually controlled when it comes to this. So when it comes to the interior, and then of course, you know, you've got your, your, your holders for your sodas and coffee, and then you've got a pretty decent center console. One thing that used to be a problem on Corvettes, this used to get super hot. Well, it doesn't do it anymore because the engine's in the rear. All right, so let's start from home. As you can tell from home, you got audio, phone, nav, Wi-Fi, hotspot, Android Auto, Apple Car CarPlay settings, and your own user. Then, of course, you can go to music. You got FM, XM. You can do sound, browse. You can do whatever you want uh, as far as, you know, you can do your manually channel searching if you'd like. Uh, then of course you've got your phone if you have a phone attached and then of course it's got your nav and then it's got this is your climate control even though you have everything over here on the right it shows you the time of day it shows you it's 82 degrees you got a 4G hotspot it's got everything on here that tells you what's going on so you don't have to fool with it. Settings are kind of interesting Set your time, your date, your language, and then your privacy, display, sound, voice. You can do you can do basically all of it just uh, with a touch of a finger. And of course, you've got apps. You know you can add apps to it if you'd like. You know if you want to put nav in a new phone, my Chevrolet will actually if you download my Chevrolet and the download the app notifications, it'll basically take care of the the car will take care of itself. And then you've got your Z modes, my mode, climate, air, collision, detecting system in the event you get in an accident, lighting, power door locks, remote lock and unlock, seating position. And my favorite, if you're goofy enough to give your kid this car, there is a teen driver. Now, teen driving mode allows you, as it says, to assign keys with customization restrictions refer to your owner's manual. So what that means is if you want him to go no faster than 65, put it in there. If he goes more than 65, it'll alert you on your iPhone. If he goes into turns too fast, if he slams on his brakes, or let's say you don't want him to go anywhere, say you want him to stay within the area, and he goes, yeah, all right, Dad, I'm out of here. This team driver will tell you where that kid went. So it's a report card on the kid. Chevrolet would like you to use it as a positive reinforcement for your child, not to drag him out back and beat him with a stick because he did something with your car that you and I would have done. And I am so glad this system is not on any cars that I own when I was a child. But it's a good, it's a good tool. If they go too fast, it'll keep the volume down. I mean, there's so many things this does. It's, it's crazy. Now this is their shifting system on this vehicle, which is really quite unique. Of course, P is for park, that's pretty simple. Uh, and then of course there is also a button down underneath here if you, it puts it into park. Even though it says park here, this is like the parking brake. And you'll note it up here on the dash and a little red, once I take it off, it's off. Once I put it on, it's on. And it'll tell you that the park brake is set. Now once we are got the parking brake off, and you want to go in reverse, all you do is you take your finger, put it underneath here, lift up, and there's your backup camera, which is probably one of the best backup cameras I've seen in a long time. For whatever reason, if you want to change and you don't want to back up, you can push it into neutral and it'll sit here. But if you go into drive, there's the D, lift up on the drive, and now the front cameras are illuminated. So if you're coming up on a cement block in a parking space and you don't want to tear the nose off this car. This top section of the camera is overhead. These two are actual directional. You're actually seeing exactly what's in front of you, which there's been some concern that, well, this car's got a lot of blind spots. Well, it does, but it's got a lot of cameras too. And here's something unique. I'm a knob guy, okay? I like to be able to turn things up and down. They actually put a knob right here just for volume, and I think that is the coolest thing. Yeah, the volume, there's also a volume down here underneath the steering wheel. A lot of redundancy in this car, which I have no problem with. 
but you know it has your up and down here as well and then you can always use this to go right back to uh, go right back to home so you don't have to go searching around here's another one check this out this little vent guy right here I mean you can close it and open it and I mean it's wide I mean that's got to be almost 10 inches wide which really brings in a lot of cool air the the designers of this car really thought it out oh and then there's the button you never want to touch that one what happens there when you push that button you just turned off traction control which means if you hammer 487 horsepower unless you're really good at what you do you're going to end up in the woods so we do not turn that off we leave traction control on and your insurance company appreciates it as well oh let's take a look at the top section here uh, these are all your OnStar this is your in case you get into a problem your SOS uh, this one right here uh, turns off uh, some of the uh, climate control systems and of course because we got the passenger airbag it's on and then of course you've got your mirrors with the with the lights so you can make sure you're let's see if they did it for the passenger because you know sometimes they leave oh look they care about your wife or your girlfriend how nice is that all right one other thing we want to show you is how to get out of this car see that little tiny button right there there it is and there's your lock and unlock this opens up the the frunk which is up front where you put your baggage and this one opens up the rear everything is very well positioned and here's your memory seats so if you will have you have uh, two options to set up like you and your passenger to set your seats up so when you get in you just hit the button and you're in the seat and everything goes exactly where you want steering wheel is power goes up go down telescopes in and out so you can position it to your to your style and how you like it Okay, now we're looking at heads-up display. You can change the configuration on the heads-up display for minimal with a little bit more and then with a full active G-force gauges, mile per hour, tachometer, and speedometer. And then, of course, you go back to that and it'll just do mile per hour and what gear you're in. So it's totally programmable. To whatever driving needs you're looking for that's a g-force so if you're going to a turn super fast it could pull up to 1.2 1.3 g's like in an airplane one other feature on this car that we haven't really talked about is cylinder deactivation you can drive along as you see it says v8 right here if you're just cruising down the freeway it could drop down as much as six cylinders four cylinders two cylinders and that's why you can get 30 plus miles per gallon out of this thing and by the way with a full tank of fuel you get about 340 mile range not bad for a supercar all right folks don't forget to tune in to cruising stay online with us get subscriptions that way you'll be alerted every time we come up with something because you have no idea what we're going to do next and you know what neither do we why because we're cruising